Well, before we go on the bench today, on this nice snowy little day, I don't know if you can see that, uh, we've got a Kenwood TM731E. Um, I've taken it apart a little bit. As I've said before in my other videos, if you can't get this far, then don't bother. Um, effectively, a couple of screws on the top, some on the side here. Remove those, same for the bottom. Uh, the front's held on with some clips, as you can see there. Just two screws, the one there, and then at the bottom they're just unclipped. You will need to remove the knobs and the buttons. Um, they come off in a, sort of looking a little bit like that. Um, and the knobs obviously just pull them off. And the fault that we've got with this, uh, reported anyway. Uh, pick this up on eBay for cheap, some for the car. Um, is the master VFO 24 position rotary encoder it is not working? Um, we'll power it up and we'll test that out. Um, as it was initially working, and now for some reason it stopped, so let's power it up. Okay, so we've got power. Uh, let's lift it up. So we can see that a little bit better. Okay, so if we now just the rotary encoder, we've got nothing. Now, if we get to the sub encoder, that's working fine, oh, no problem at all with that one. So, we've now got to look at replacing this encoder. Unfortunately, it's a discontinued part. Um, looking at the circuit diagram, I only need three pins. Ah, oh, this is the encoder circuit on the circuit diagram. It's not very elaborate. Uh, it shows the main and the sub encoder, um, and the pull up and pull down resistors that they've got associated going on to the uh, microprocessor. Um, it's a bit vague, the circuit diagram, but I will look a little bit more into that. Um, so we just got to find something that really that we can either replace this with and mount it on the original board, um, or we're going to have to. I don't know, hot melt it to the board and use some link wires. Um, th there is some third party companies that have made replacements for these, but when these encoders are only a couple of quid, to be honest, I don't want to spend lots of money on this. I mean, I've got it cheap. Um, it's not worth spending a lot of money on, so, but as I say, if I rotate it there, you can see nothing's happening. If I use the, uh, the hand mic and use the up and down keys, um, as you can see, this we it'll work off that, so it's not necessarily that um, necessarily that I actually need it working fully. So, um, but what we'll do, we'll uh, we'll desolder this, get this off, um, have a look at how we get this front panel off. Um, again, the surface manual is not overly clear about that, so it looks like there's a couple of screws here and there that we need. To, well, hopefully, we can just drop the front and desolder this. Um, and then we can, sorry this, um, we can then just get this VFO off um, or the encoder off and change it. Might, might even open it up and have a look inside it. Uh, might be something as simple as that. So uh, we'll do that um, and I'll come back to you as soon as I've got a little bit further uh, how to remove this front without damaging anything. Okay, we found out how to get to the front. Um, a total of five little screws in total. Um, We've got one to remove here, one to remove over here. There's one all the way down there. Uh, there's one on the top here, and just one on the side. Um, and that will then give you access to the front where uh, you should be able to you know, just lift it away and give us a, give us enough access to the back of the board. Yeah, okay, I've lifted the board away, uh, just carefully disconnecting these ribbons. Um, which is giving me better access now to the battery and also these these six or five pins whatever it is six uh, of the encoder okay remove the encoder Oops. what I should do I'm going to look at it uh, uh, seems the way I found it those are the two large squares there is to remove the um, the larger amount of solder there uh, so it becomes loose and then just wipe your solder iron across the, the smaller pads um, to uh, encourage them to come loose, pull it off and then desolder them using a desolder tool whatever you've got um, to clear out the holes. 
Um, I've took the encoder apart and here it is. Here it is. Um, and this is what you end up with basically. There's, there's four little lugs on, on this which if you bend those out uh, this this plate next to it here will just drop away um, revealing the encoder plate with the carbon tracks and uh, obviously the encoder uh, pins um, they look a little bit bent and worn on this but um, I did a continuity check and based on um, this drawing here let me just zoom back out um, from C to the very inner track the smallest one on the carbon track uh, I have continuity from A to the next outer I have no continuity and from B to the very outer carbon track there is continuity so basically I've lost um, A really um, I'm, uh, whether these conventions are right or not, but the, 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 the pad track layout seems to be right. So, so I'm just using A, B and C anyway, um, just so you can get a visual idea. And obviously A and B go off to a microprocessor via that pull-out resistor. And I believe they're shorted down to deck via C. Um, so what we've got to do is we've got to find um, a format of a uh, 24 rotational encoder. Um, that we can rewire into this configuration and obviously with the right shaft uh, diameter so we can use the original um, encoder knob um, or VFO knob whatever you want to call it but just going back down to this again um, if we can just lift this up for you I don't know if we can see this any better we just zoom in a little bit um, pins aren't brilliant on it hope you can see that um, I could attempt to straighten them I suppose but I think I'm just going to get another encoder because well, there's nothing I can do with this part of it anyway the actual carbon track tracking is broken so and um, I'm presuming this is the reason why the, the encoder isn't working so the next job is to um, saw something that's very similar to this um, even if you have to hot melt it to the board or whatever um, as the this part is no longer available there might be something similar but I'll have a dig around if I come across anything I'll let you know but other than that I think it'd just be a generic encoder um, you can get it for the Arduinos and all the rest of it for a couple of quid okay I found something cheap that does the job um, this this is a part number KY040 the one I bought was uh, WB040 rotary encoder. Um, does the job. Uh, the only thing you need to do is on the back of the board um, there are uh, two 10k resistors uh, which we just find it there, uh, which are just there. Just zoom in on those. There, oh, a bit too much. Uh, there's two 10k resistors, take those off, you don't need those. Okay, and then what we end up with. If I zoom back out and come over to the radio, is basically I haven't soldered this in the moment. It's just I've just bent the pins and it's just sort of sitting there at the moment. So uh, powered the radio up. Um, now if we click the rotary encoder around, as you can see, I've got the 12 and a half k spacing set, um, and that's what it's giving me. Um, okay, this is my budge. This is. This is the budge we've done. Um, on the original, this is an original one. Uh, we've rotated the pins so they're facing down, and we've cut off the DT pin and one of the legs on the switch because this is a momentary push switch um, type uh, encoder. So you can press down. So we've cut the one off that was next to DT. Then we've soldered DT across to the SW point and on a, obviously on the back as well we removed R2 and R3, the 10k resistors, we've removed those totally. So if I'd show you the original, 
It's your original. That's how it looked. Excuse me, it's not my soldering. That's how it came. Um, so let's remove those. And effectively, because the spa the, the pin configuration on the PCB, um, effectively, if you like, we want to use the uh, the clock and the DT and next to each other on these. But unfortunately, on the original PCB, you've got clock zero volt. Then, uh, if you like DT, using the convention that's on here, or, or if you like, in my case, A, B, and C is ground. So, um, what I've had to do is, by disconnecting and cutting this pin off, that makes this switch obsolete. So, I've just joined then the DT pin to the SW, which effectively makes that now A, nothing, B. And then ground is just normal ground. There's no problem at all with that. But you must cut that pin off. Um, and the other thing I'll have to do, I'll have to put a little bit of tape on there because when I go to solder onto the PCB, I do not want that making any form of contact. So I'm going to follow that flush. And then um, it doesn't matter about the uh, the plus pin. It's not doing nothing. It's not connected to anything. Um, but as now you've removed R1, R2, um, and it's only on the one side of R1. So it, it won't actually do anything when you press this button. It basically just put ground to nothing. So, um, and that, so that's the bodge. Um, now, it's not far off spacing as well. You do have to, unfortunately it's not a through all plated board. So you do have to leave a very slight gap. So you can actually push the pins in. I, I left them flush with the surface um, and then soldered. Um, and I've just tried it temporary fit and it seems to work okay so and the spacing and the height of it like this is quite good so I might have to just glue on a little spacer down here somewhere um, so when it's resting actually on the uh, PCB because um, as it stands at the moment it's it's sort of like a little bit but I could use some hot mail glue but but it also roughly works out bang on dead center as well so um, and I have got a little bit of flexibility and a little bit of movement in the pins, so that's something you can play with. Um, so we'll give it a go and see what it does. Um, hopefully that should do it. Um, ah, I know it's not. Uh, but the, it's an obsolete part now. The radio is not worth next to nothing. It's not worth spending a lot of money on it. And as I say, this encoder was two quid. So we'll try putting it back together now. A bit of hot melt glue and bits and bobs and let's see if we can actually um, get it up and running um, and see what it looks like. Okay, we soldered it on. Um, the, the tiny little bit of yellow tape you can see there is, is just there to protect uh, the uh, DT pin if you like on there from shorting to gram because that pin is gram so um, and I don't know if I can sort of show you that but anyway you can see it's working anyway so that's working no problem at all so and it's roughly not the far off the right height um, I'm going to do side profile so I'm going to have to pack something under there be a bit of hot melt glue and I've given myself a little flexibility so I can centre it better on the plastic bezel that comes with it. Um, so we'll have a go doing that. And then as soon as I've done that, uh, we'll try a complete fit and see how it works out. Okay, it's all back together, um, as regards the front anyway. Uh, it fitted quite nice, to be honest. Um, the VFO slipped straight on, other than I did have to get the Dremel out. And uh, on the shaft of the encoder knob there's um, a metal retaining clip and it's a little bit long so I just dremeled that piece off um, a little bit of filing here and there um, and it's gone together quite nice um, seems to work fine now uh, knobs in place um, so it's really just a question of putting it back together now and I'll chuck it in the car um, but yeah it seems to work fine uh, so, to summarise, um, just a WB040 um, encoder with a little slight modification to it. Um, was the cheapest fix I could find. Um, I'll do a few more tests on this, um, but yeah, seems fine now.